<laughs> Hi everyone, Look the Knee Back Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a video where I get a bit retrospective on my back catalog of reviews and go over some of the most hated ones that I've done over the years, the ones that have gotten the strongest, most negative reactions, and give you guys my thoughts on some of those negative reactions, as well as uh, go into whether or not my views on the records that I'm talking about here have changed at all since I originally covered them years ago. Considering how polarizing some of these past reviews have been, uh, that should be pretty fun. Now, before I get too deep in the process of doing this video, I'd like to cut over to a shout out to our sponsor here, Stereo. Anthony? Thanks, Anthony. Stereo is a live broadcast social platform that allows you to have and listen to conversations in real time. Recently, I've been using it to host conversations with fellow reviewers about uh, reviews and takes that I've had over the years that uh, we don't quite see eye to eye on. I had a very good and colorful conversation with Mike Seatown of Dead and Hip Hop. You know, there are there are very distinctive parts and they may be held to a different standard as far as creativity and differentiation and riffs and that sort of thing, whereas a raw black metal album isn't really so much about that. Mark from Spectrum Pulse also took me to task on a few records. And of course, there were some points over the course of these conversations where uh, we let you guys get in on the action too. I remember when Mark went on Twitter to just say, flat out, no, the review for the big day was just not in line with your character. And I'd like you guys to expand on that. I think that'd be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I invite you guys to hit up one of the links down below to check those conversations out or go live on stereo and start some debates of your own. Now, I have one more of these conversations scheduled with uh, Sean C, which is going to happen very soon. So uh, jump on my profile, follow and keep an eye out for when that's announced. And I hope to see all you guys over there for that. Shout out to stereo one more time for the platform and the sponsorship on this video. Now, Back to Anthony. Thank you, Anthony. Now to kick off this list of records in no particular order, of course, I'd like to, uh, I guess, do a bit of spring cleaning and mention a few really obvious ones off the top, just because if they were to go unmentioned in this video, <laughs> Even though I may do more, uh, it would really kind of do this whole thing a disservice. So let's begin with uh, uh, the first one. <laughs> Starting off with this one. My beautiful dark twisted defense. Do, do I even need to do this? Do I need to do this one? I mean, there's not even a point in showing you guys examples of people talking shit on my review here because all of you watching this have most likely done your fair share of that in my comments, on social media, in a forum post or something. I mean, y'all are coming at me every day over this review for the past 10 years, I've pretty much accepted at this point in my life, I'm, you know, this is just gonna, it's gonna haunt me forever, and that's fine. I mean, I went as far as to, uh, you know, bulk up a lot of my criticisms and my Redux review of this thing, and uh, yeah, I, I think I don't need to beat a dead horse or anything. This is one of my most hated reviews, voila. Ooh, yes, this one got a lot of hate as well. The review I did for House of Balloons, the breakout mixtape from Abel Tesfe, AKA The Weeknd, a project that essentially set the tone for alternative R&B, much of R&B, in fact, for the next decade. There were a lot of negative reactions to my review at the time, specifically to the fact that I didn't really fully understand like what the personnel situation with The Weeknd was, which wasn't helped by the lack of in-depth press and interviews at the time, but regardless, that's my bad. Plus, I think even if I did hit that nail on the head, the reactions to my takes here uh, wouldn't have been that much more positive, because I did seem to take issue with a lot of things here that uh, fans just loved about it, be that Abel's voice, which I think improved on later releases, also the production, which I thought was maybe a bit too shoddy at points, and also the weirdly 
predatory, creepy attitude toward women in the midst of all of these drug-fueled party stories. I didn't take to a lot of that on this tape at the time. To this day, I still don't, though. It is a lot easier, as Abel has gotten more ambitious over the years, to see more merit in everything he's doing here. And I did do an update video on the Fantano channel talking about how my views on this tape have evolved over the years. So even if personally I have not grown to love the tape, I can acknowledge that uh, I was like super <laughs> harsh on it and uh, totally understand why people hated it so much. Hiatus Coyotes Choose Your Weapon 2015 Record 2015 Review. And uh, yeah, this was the breakout LP of this Australian group, which uh, was so beloved at the time, frankly, I fear for my life every time I travel down to Australia. Now, in concept, I totally get the appeal of this group. It's what made me excited to listen to their stuff in the first place. That and the band's ability to come out ahead in this recent wave at the time of groups adding new records to the field of Neo Soul. There are also plenty of points on this LP where the band seamlessly weaves in elements of jazz, hip hop, and funk too. Now, when I originally reviewed this thing, I was pretty dismissive of the band's abilities to execute these tracks, uh, the sloppy mixes as well, the multi-phased songs and instrumentals, which mostly felt like a distraction from the lack of an interesting tune at the core of everything. And the viewers took issue with this. All of it. No, you got this one all the way wrong. First of all, this album is nowhere near Neo Soul. Yes, it has jazz and soul influences, but it's so beyond the pre-packaged microwavable sound that Neo Soul has become. I mean, you know, not the case for all artists, but okay. Uh, you've got electronic, funk, jazz, hip-hop, and eastern sounds all in one place. It's kind of crazy to label this Neo Soul. I don't know what you mean about the production either. The drums have a great bottom and the guitars and keys are clear as a bell. You miss this one. It's definitely a 9 out of 10. Try listening again and go back and listen to Snarky Puppy's Silva while you're at it, please. Well, that, that also kind of explains it because I cannot stand Snarky Puppy. That is like Jazz's answer to, I don't know, like a college thesis. But having said that, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I did go back, I did revisit the record, and I mostly still kind of feel uh, the same way. Cannot believe you thought the vocals were just average. Her voice is seriously phenomenal. I guess I'm just not really blown away especially uh, when it comes to notes in the lower register, which don't really seem to carry the same power or volume as the mid-range, but I don't know. That's just me. Certainly it is one of the more eccentric modern records in this field, uh, and commend the band's uh, ambitions when it comes to blending different genres and pulling these tracks through different transitions, but I still do think Choose Your Weapon leaves a lot to be desired on the execution end. Ooh, King Cruel, The Ooze. This was a spicy one. When this one dropped, my god, it was a spicy meatball. This thing currently stands at over 10,000 dislikes. That's a lot of not liking, which I guess I can't really fault you guys on because I don't like this record really, and uh, frankly, I, I still don't, and I don't see why you hate me so much for this review. Why? It was just too easy to get impatient with this thing. Sorry it's not Death Grips. Boom, boom, boom. Why did Death Grips and Archie Marshall have to be at opposite ends here? Like, obviously I enjoy things other than Death Grips. Your need for every song to be a standalone track really impedes on this review. Well, I didn't explicitly say that. I said there were lots of tracks on the record that frankly were half-baked, and while I guess uh, songs that felt finished or didn't just meander into nothingness uh, would have made them more stand out on an individual level, uh, frankly it's, it's really the aimlessness of the record generally that was disheartening for me. I think the album itself may give off the impression that each individual track sometimes comes off as unfinished, yet I do not think you're looking at each track in context to everything else. Well, I at least don't think you're observing the combination of tracks in an abstract sort of way. All the tracks mesh together very well with their sound and presentation. I mean, I guess you could say it's sort of uniformly hitting a similar emotional vibe, but I didn't really see much of this record like reinforcing itself in terms of like each uh, track here kind of building together. Oh, and this guy wrote a whole review of my review. Um, that's quite 
nice. You know, it's it's uh, A for effort. I mean, I guess I understand some of the gripes that you guys have with uh, my takes on this record generally, but even returning to it to this day, I just don't really get much out of the gray, aimless, dejected, and unengaged vibe that it uh, puts out there. So with that being said, if you guys mess with this record, you mess with it. Obviously, I enjoy Archie's work generally, respect the guy very much as an artist, and frankly, in a way, I am happy that I have an audience that if you guys hate what I'm saying, you will just destroy me in the comments rather than just going along with every single thing that I say. Yeah. Woo! This one got a lot of uh, bad responses to Stephen Wilson, Modern Prague's Prince, with his third solo album to date here, and over the years it's really proven itself to be uh, one of his biggest, if not his biggest and most celebrated solo project. All I knew at the time that I dropped this review is that uh, I instantaneously created a massively contentious relationship with much of Stephen Wilson's fan base, which is, is still going pretty strong to this day with uh, having released a not bad review of his latest LP, which uh, seems to be getting some polarizing reactions from his hardcore fans. Uh, a lot of them don't like it. Still to this day, I very much see Raven as a middling prog record that features Wilson really cosplaying his influences, and if this happens to be a record that you love from front to back, blows your mind, really touches your soul, uh, that is something that if you heard uh, come out of uh, this mouth, would most likely disgust you. But yes, in my view, Wilson was really trying to embody his influences quite desperately on this LP, to the point where he literally got a Mellotron used by King Crimson, which commenters were eager to remind me of when I doubted its authenticity. Excuse me, I was in a little disbelief that Steven would take it that far, but also I had no idea that you could make a Mellotron sound this tinny and unbearable, which leads me to the dry and flat production throughout this record that, uh, yeah, I still kind of feel like that's how it sounds. Plus the nearly passionless lead vocals on this thing to me feel like uh, getting slapped with a cold fish. So yeah, sadly I have not really budged on this LP too much. I will say I do think that uh, many of Steven's compositional ambitions are admirable, but my enjoyment of this project pretty much starts and ends there. Uh, while I love that you guys love this, I'm uh, relatively unfazed by the hate. Yeah. Eating my words. Eating my words. With this one, I'm gonna be eating my words. Taking it back to 2014 on this one, it's Travis Scott's Days Before Rodeo, La Flame's breakout mixtape, which essentially was a teaser to his big rodeo record that obviously I loved. But yeah, at the time I tore this tape apart, I did not see much merit in it. Uh, I was also not expecting much from it given how much uh, uh, th that, uh, what was it, that Owl Pharaoh project? That was even worse. And the Travis Scott fans at the time hated my review of that as well. I mean, my God. The Travis fans were going hard at this freaking point. I'm telling you, man, they, they were vicious. Some people have even come back in the comments of this tape and pointed out that I, I didn't really see much in Travis's future off of uh, this tape. But look, frankly, I'm happy to be proven wrong on this one because as a result, we got some of the best trap records of the 2010s from Travis Scott. With that being said though, I am still not that crazy about this tape, and considering how wide the gap in quality is between this and Rodeo, could you blame me? Like, what enjoyment I get out of this at this point is a little bit like House of Balloons, because obviously, you know, Abel kind of progressed and improved beyond that point pretty quickly, as did Travis, but I feel like uh, Days Before Rodeo is like way more of a mess than House of Balloons ever was on the vocal side, on the production side. Like, because Travis really nailed it on Rodeo, and for the most part nailed it on much of Astroworld too, it's only because of that I'm able to look at the horrendous singing 
on this thing. The whacked out mixes, the uh, sudden and ineffective transitions and beat switches on certain tracks that uh, feel almost random at some points. I'm able to overlook that stuff or at least see what he's going for because I've heard a fully realized version. If Rodeo never, ever, ever happened ever, ever, then uh, yeah, for me personally, it would be a lot more difficult to listen to Days Before Rodeo and be like, okay, yeah, th there's something to that. So look, I will say in my defense, at least past this point, I was able to instantly see the genius in Rodeo when it hit me. I was not just approaching Travis as a total doubter and a hater. It just took a moment for him to make the music that I think he should have been making, and he made it. And now, uh, to this day, I am able to look forward to a new album when, in fact, Travis McDonald's PlayStation Fortnite... Tra <laughs> Man, the third Toro Imoi record dropped in 2013. And even though it's not the oldest review here, it's not the oldest album here, it still feels like ancient history because uh, people don't really bring this one up to me anymore, but at the time, my God, the, the fans hated it. And I could understand why. This was a big record for Chaz because effectively it marked his transition coming out of that whole chill wave thing, trending instead into the sounds of house and synth pop and R&B. And yeah, I uh, slapped it with a four. But I will say, it's not like the reviews generally for this thing were rave to begin with. Uh, I, I think if I remember correctly, there were a lot more positive vibes toward Underneath the Pine, uh, including for me as well. I never comment on videos, but I felt compelled to speak up against your criticisms. I thought you have been fairly on point with your reviews, but with this one you are far off the mark. It wasn't until I examined this record more closely that I found the musical creativity astounding. No mention of the ascending minor ninths against the syncopated pedal tone on Say That. No mention of the mess synth solos on so many details may actually be a representation of a disillusion of a relationship or confusion that may arise from mixed feelings embodied in the title. So yeah, there were a lot of comments under this review that were of that quality, and frankly, looking back at that review and looking back at the album itself, because I did re-listen to these records for this video, I was a little harsh on it. I still don't love the LP, but I do see a lot more merit in Chaz's attempts at dance music than I used to. If I have any lingering problems with this record, they're mostly centered around how amateurish the production sounds, but certainly this thing is fine when it's on and not smothering chaotically its better qualities with uh, maybe some messy layering. I think with this vid, I'll round things out with J. Cole's seminal 2014 album, 2014 Forest Hills Drive, because, uh, yeah, I really could go on forever with negative reviews. And you know what? The review I did for this one was not even that negative. Much in the same way with my My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy review, my feelings generally on this one are kind of positive. A lot of the negative reactions mostly have to do with uh, me not liking it quite as much or not seeing it to be the genius genius work that many people do. In this record's defense, I will say uh, this is easily one of J. Cole's most personal, realized, and consistent projects, but I feel like it hits a lot of those marks merely by virtue of just being blatantly unadventurous, which is a quality I think a lot of people see in J. Cole's music, which is why a lot of the negativity toward this review and my J. Cole reviews in general is mostly relegated to his very hardcore fan base. Cole's music here, and oftentimes, uh, does, I guess, appeal, but it doesn't always impress. Sure, the track Fire Squad still bad but much of the time when I am snapped at attention, it's off of a really weak line or the increasing awkwardness of the track Wet Dreams, which, God, I forgot how long that song feels. Like, by the third verse, you, you really do get the point. I don't know how much further we need to go. And to once more bring it back to the reception of my critiques on this record, while there has been a lot of negativity and a lot of, 
I guess, dismissiveness, uh, just, again, kind of calling me a Cole hater, just a general Cole disliker, don't like anything Cole does. That's not entirely true. I don't hate everything Cole does or has ever done. And on top of it, that's not really swinging me in the direction of liking this record anyway. So honestly, like, what's your goal here? But yeah, those are generally my thoughts on this LP and all of the records that I talked about in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh, hit that like and leave a comment if you want to see me going over more of my most hated reviews. Uh, shout out one more time to our sponsor in this video, Stereo. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, you guys are the best. Transition. Have you given any of these albums a listen or the reviews? Have you watched the reviews for all these things? Uh, let me know uh, down in the comments. Over here next to my head, it's another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Uh, Anthony Fantano, most hated reviews of forever.